this is TCB ASMR here. In this video, I will be discussing all of the NFL trades leading up to the trade deadline, which just passed Monday, I believe it was. Uh, so, the first team we'll look at is the Ravens, uh, and as you can see, this article has grades. I'm not sure who this guy is, but um, he put his grades in here, but I also obviously give my thoughts. So, the Ravens, they get Deontay Johnson and a sixth round pick from the Panthers. Carolina received a fifth round pick. Um, I agree with the grade here for the, the Ravens. I think this was a great trade. I mean, Say Flowers has been really good for the Ravens this season. Uh, you also have Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, who are also pretty good. Um, and then Rashad Bateman has had a decent season, I would say so far outside of a, uh, a few drops. But for the most part, um, the Ravens receiving core has been decent. I would say I would say it's been solid outside of Zay Flowers. Definitely could have been better in certain moments, but um, this move is definitely a good one, especially for the price. Fifth round draft pick for a receiver that will definitely add some good depth. And Deontay Johnson is a pretty solid receiver, so we saw what he can do at or in Carolina a little bit, but mainly in Pittsburgh. For the Panthers, I agree. Again, I would probably say somewhere around like a D because a fifth-round draft pick and you have to give up a sixth as well is not great. Now, I know they don't have to pay him anymore, but, I mean, that sixth-rounder is, is not, or excuse me, a fifth-rounder is nothing, especially if you're a Super Bowl contending team like the Ravens for a piece like Deontay Johnson who could really help you in the long run. Um, let's see, we have DeAndre Hopkins going to the Chiefs from the Titans. Now, he does have, like, a knee injury, I believe, uh, but he did go crazy in his second game. He scored two touchdowns, as you can see here, against the Bucks, and they won that game in overtime, so already making an impact. Didn't do too much in the first game, if I remember correctly, but I think he'll definitely help them out. This is a team who receiving wise has been pretty depleted uh, really just on the offensive side of the ball as a whole they lost Pacheco who's supposed to come back soon uh, but they lost him early on in the season they lost Rasheed Rice for the entire season uh, Hardman um, I believe is out for Hardman might not be out for the season but Hollywood Brown is out for the season Juju Smith-Schuster after his pretty solid game had a hamstring injury and he's out for a while so just not really a great situation overall um, with the injuries and everything for the Chiefs, but they still are undefeated. So I agree with that. I'd probably say like a B plus instead of an A, but uh, for Tennessee, they get a conditional fifth, which is fine. Um, I don't know what type of contract Hopkins was on, but I know it wasn't cheap. Um, and the Titans suck. What are they, two and seven? I think, or even worse, um, I think they're like two and seven, something like that. Whatever, doesn't matter. They're they're bad. Everyone knows that. So it didn't really make sense to keep a veteran receiver uh, like DeAndre Hopkins. So I agree with that. You just get at least something for Hopkins. All right, um, this one happened a little bit earlier on last month, almost a month ago now. But Amari Cooper to the Bills, great great trade for the Bills. They really needed a good receiver. Um, and while Amari Cooper can be a little inconsistent, I still think this was a great deal because you have a pretty young receiving core with really the best receiver being Keon Coleman, your rookie. Khalil Shakir is pretty solid. Uh, you have the two tight ends, Kincaid and, um, and Knox, who are, are both pretty solid, but you really needed a standout guy for defenses to look at and pay attention to, and that's Amari Cooper. For the Bills, or excuse me, for the Browns, I think this is also not a bad trade, because they're not good. So you might as well get rid of you know, one of your your main assets. Uh, I don't know what type of contract he's on. Um... Okay, so he's on the final year of his of his contract. So yeah, that's that's perfect. Uh, so they just get him out. They won't pay him. They weren't probably weren't going to pay him in the off season anyway. So they at least get something here. They get a third and a seventh. They give up a sixth and obviously Cooper. But I don't think that's too bad. 
for the Browns. I, I agree with these these grades. Uh, Lions, they pick up Zadarius Smith from the Browns. I thought they should have gone for uh, Max Crosby. But, hey, I think this is still a pretty solid deal, especially for a fifth and a sixth that are going to be at the you know later ends in the round. Or later ends of the rounds. I mean, Zadarius Smith is a proven edge rusher in this league. He was pretty good for the Packers uh, in his tenure there. And I haven't really paid attention to him at the Browns, but we know what, what he can do. And I think he will provide good cover for Aiden Hutchinson, who is out. Um, and unless the Lions make the Super Bowl, he probably won't be back. So, and they definitely could make the Super Bowl, but. You know, there's, there's still a little ways to go, but yes, Darius Smith is a good player. Again, I thought they should have gone for Max Crosby. I thought they should have gone for a home run in Max Crosby, but hey, um, Browns, they have him graded at a B plus. I'd probably give him a B. I mean, um, I don't know, Sedarius Smith, what is he on? This is year two. Um, of his tenure in Cleveland. I don't know what his contract is, but uh, yeah, I think a solid solid deal for both teams. And that was right before the, or on the deadline day, I believe. And then we have the Chiefs trading or receiving, excuse me, uh, Josh Uche from the Patriots for a sixth. I mean, cheap six rounder for a Super Bowl contending team. You get some depth at that linebacker position pretty invaluable uh, to have that, especially when you're making deep playoff runs and everyone's banged up. And for the Patriots, yeah, I'd probably agree with like a C, I mean, a six rounder. You could probably hassle them for like a fifth, maybe. Um, but yeah, for the Chiefs, solid deal. Then, um, of course, Devontae Adams happened on the same day as the Amari Cooper trade, but Devontae Adams to the Jets. Raiders get a third round conditional draft pick um, I like this deal for both teams because Rodgers gets his main guy back in Devontae Adams and actually in this time that they've been together Garrett Wilson has really been benefiting from it uh, which I guess you you could have you could have seen coming since defenses are going to put more attention towards Adams and kind of pick their poison but I would definitely put more attention to Adams but for the Raiders I mean, you were paying him a ton of money. He didn't want to be there. And you still get a third-round pick, which you never know could turn into a great player. Might not with the Raiders' recent draft history, but you never know. So, I mean, they got they got an expensive guy out there, and they're obviously rebuilding. So, I think it's a good deal for both teams. I agree with those grades. Uh, for this one, Pittsburgh gets Mike Williams from the Jets for a fifth. I mean, I guess, I guess it's fine. Um, I think at this point in Mike Williams' Williams's career, he's just like an okay receiver. So, I mean, he's a good jump ball catcher, similar to George Pickens. Um, so, I mean, there's that, but I would probably put this as like a C for both teams. I mean, a fifth rounder. Actually, I'd probably keep the B for New York. A fifth for Mike Williams isn't that bad, especially with all the injuries he's had. Um, and he'll also be a free agent this season, so a fifth is, is not too bad. This is another big trade on the deadline day, I believe. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore going from the New Orleans Saints to the Washington Commanders. The Commanders obviously get Lattimore, excuse me, and a fifth rounder. New Orleans gets a third, fourth, and a sixth in the upcoming draft. As a Saints fan, it's sad to see uh, Lattimore go, but it's time. I mean, we suck. Um, and out of the assets that you know, actually have some value or the guys that we have on the team or that they have on the team that really have value. Lattimore is up there. He's, he's right up there with Kamara and, I mean, I guess Olave, but Olave is 
all types of banged up right now. And I mean, there would definitely be a team that would take Derek Carr, I think. Um, there's a few other players that would definitely be up there. But yeah, a lot of more was definitely at the top of that list. Um, been with the team since 2017, I want to say. Yeah, 2017, part of that amazing draft class that the Saints had in 2017. But unfortunately, his time in New Orleans is up. And I think the Saints got a pretty good deal back for him. Three draft picks, a third, a fourth, and a sixth. Don't have to pay him anymore. Um, he's an $18 million cap hit. So he's making a pretty good amount. Obviously, he's a fantastic corner. Uh, he has been injured a little bit, but I wouldn't really be too, too worried about that. But for the Commanders, I would actually upgrade this to probably an A. Uh, they really needed a good corner because they've been getting torched this year. Um, so, he'll definitely help them out, especially in the NFC East where you have, uh, I mean, the Giants aren't really the, a threat, but you do have Malik Neighbors. You have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, who are the main people I would say are really a threat because the Eagles have a, a solid record. The Cowboys, I mean, I would say C.D., but the Cowboys are screwed with Dak being out for multiple weeks. C.D. might not even play. So, But in the NFC, you have a lot of great wide receivers. Amon Ross, St. Brown, uh, Jameson Williams will be back. Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. I might be forgetting some guys, Drake London. You get the point. There are a lot of great receivers in the NFC. You got the Rams guys as well. Uh, so having a great corner is really beneficial. And I think the commanders, I don't think they'll obviously make the playoffs. I don't know how far they'll go. But, I mean, this isn't, he's under contract for two years, I think. Yeah, he's under contract for two years, so. Next season, you know, if they improve, they get somebody else in the draft that makes a big, big jump. And Jaden Daniels, if he takes another step up, which, I mean, would be absurd, but if he improves next season, they definitely could go deep into the playoffs as, as long as they uh, improve that defensive side of the ball in the secondary. For this one, um, Cardinals get Baron Browning. Not very familiar with him. But I do, yeah, I did see B.J. Ojolari is out for this season, uh, which sucks. He's a solid player. Um, but I, I'm not going to speak on this one too much. I mean, they get depth at a position they needed. So that's good. And the Broncos, they get a sixth, which is fine. Uh, Cincinnati get Khalil Herbert after Zach Moss injured his neck, and he'll be out for a little while, so they get Kelly Harbert, who's a good runner, um, doesn't really catch the ball too well, uh, from what I understand of his game, and from what I saw a bit of in Chicago, but he's a good runner, good to have a player like that on your team, uh, but Chase Brown is obviously the number one there, and they got him for a seventh, which is not bad, um, he's relatively young, I want to say, so, you know, not not too bad. Uh, yeah, he's only 26. So, definitely could see him further on. I don't know if he is, his contract is up after this season, but running backs usually don't make a whole lot anyways, especially now ones that are getting traded for a seventh rounder. Uh, Vikings, they get Cam Robinson. They give up a conditional fifth and get back a conditional seventh. Cam Robinson is pretty much just injury cover because Darisaw got hurt. Um, unfortunately, had a season-ending injury, which you never like to see because Darisaw is a pretty good tackle, to put it um, to put it simply, I, I suppose. But um, yeah, David Questenberry is, is not is not a good replacement, and Cam Robinson is decent. Um, but as you can see, he did get benched for Walker Little. But, I mean, it is what it is. You, you're not going to be able to instantly replace, or you're rarely able to place, replace, excuse me, a great left tackle in the middle of the season, much less, or 
excuse me, um, at all over the season, in the off season, much less in the middle of the season, unless you're prepared to give up a lot, which obviously the Vikings being in the position that they're in were not. So I think it's a fine deal, even if he does get torched in some of the games. I mean, actually at that point, it would probably be kind of rough, but, and then for the Jags, I mean, they suck, so it's fine. And yeah, they benched him, as you can see here, so they at least they got some for him. Steelers get Preston Smith from the Packers. Um, another good depth player. Uh, and yeah, like, like not you said, like the article says. Um, yeah, they went without Alex Highsmith for a little while. So having linebacker, edge rusher depth never hurts. Uh, I did not realize he was 32. But I think, yeah, I think they could still get some more out of uh, Preston Smith. And then we had Khalil Davis going from the Texans to the Niners. Not gonna lie, don't really know who this is. Uh, but solid depth. Seems like he's a decent player, and yeah, Hargrave did get hurt. So, and they only gave up a seventh, so you can't really hate on it. Uh, Seahawks, they get Ray Robertson Harris from the Jags. Not familiar with him. I'm just going to be honest, but Seattle has been pretty rough on defense at times, so you know, defensive depth is not, is not too bad. Yeah, just versi versatility and uh, with injuries, you know never go wrong beefing up the line more bodies is, is never uh, a bad option especially for what do they give up a sixth it's, you know it is what it is all right then the Texans give up Cam Akers um, I mean Aaron Jones yeah he's been banged up but I think he'll be fine um, Houston got a conditional sixth they gave up a conditional seventh and Akers I think it's a decent move for the Vikings getting that back up. Sorry if you guys can hear my fridge. And then we had Ernest Jones going to Seattle, and Seattle traded Jerome Baker in a fourth to the Titans. Um, I would probably put this at a B plus for the Titans, and yeah, definitely a C. I don't really get it, I guess, but. Um, I mean, I think Jerome Baker's a pretty good player, a pretty solid player. I had that same opinion since he was on the Dolphins. At least from the games I saw, I thought he was solid. But um, I don't know too much about Jones. To be honest, I don't really catch a lot of Seahawks games. So I wouldn't really have been noticing him. But, um, or excuse me, a lot of Titans games. So as it was a stingy defense that some other part of the stingy defense that's other ball carries the titans do did have a very good uh run defense i believe really defense overall there hasn't been bad um or it hasn't been you know the worst but um uh, i mean i get i mean i guess it's fine but it says seahawks still got gashed uh, but it improved the tackling in the middle so it's good uh, but like I said, I do think Jerome Baker's a pretty solid player. So, I don't know that I completely agree with the grades. I'd probably put this at like a B plus, maybe. I mean, but that's just nitpicking because it's at an A minus. All right, Baltimore get Trey White from the Rams, who's kind of gone uh, missing since he left the Bills. Um, <laughs> he's been injured and... You know, just just not the same as, as he once was. Yeah, he got torched by JMO in uh, in week one. So and yeah, he just hasn't been healthy. So I think this is a better move for the Rams than the Ravens. The Ravens are still getting torched. They got torched by Jamar Chase. Uh, and Kyle Hamilton went down. Not sure what that injury is looking like, but yeah, 
hasn't played more than six games in a season after suffering an ACL tear in 2021. Then he tore his Achilles. Yeah, White, was, Trey White was was a great corner uh, when he was healthy in Buffalo, but now, I mean, it's kind of looking rough. But yeah, for the Ravens, I mean, not much to lose considering they're already getting torched. So you know, maybe see if you can do something. Uh, next, we have the Cowboys getting Jonathan Mingo from the Panthers. Great move for the Panthers. I mean, a fourth rounder. Um, I mean, yeah, they gave up a seventh, but a fourth rounder for Mingo, who didn't really look like he looked okay, but he didn't really look like he was going to be much. They did draft him in the second, but he hasn't really done much. Yeah, I mean, this guy's going in on him. I, I held back a little bit, but getting a fourth for a guy who's been bad isn't is not the worst thing in the world and for the Cowboys Jerry Jones was saying they were going to be buyers if this is what he was talking about then I mean I, I don't know I feel I almost I almost feel bad for Cowboys fans I almost do but I really don't um, yeah I mean they, they might be betting that they can turn them around but I mean good luck and that is pretty much it. I believe, yeah, that was the last one. As far as in-season trades go. But, uh, yeah, this one is, is is bad. As far as the one I think that will have the biggest impact, I'm going to say the one that will have the biggest impact is probably... I'm going to go with the Marshawn Lattimore one. And it's not just because I'm a Saints fan. I could say that... Dante Adams won, but I really don't know. I mean, the, where are the Jets at? Where, where are they? What are they sitting at right now? Uh, they're currently three and six. So, I mean, it, and they play the Cardinals this week. I believe in Arizona. That's not an easy game. So. I don't know who they play next after that, but yeah, it's not an easy game. So if they lose here, they're three and seven, and they're not gonna win the AFC East because the Bills are seven and two, and they play they play the Colts this week, who they'll probably be. So they'll probably be eight and two, and then the Dolphins, while they're not fully back, and they lost a very close game last week. Um, what did they lose on a field goal? I think. They're two and six. I think they could. I mean, with their team, I think they can beat the Rams. Now the Rams, I think, will also end up coming close to making the playoffs. But the NFC is really tight with the um, the NFC North all having positive records. And then you got Washington and Philly. And then I don't. Know, what is Tampa Bay's record? Are they four and five now? Yeah, they play the Forty ers Um. That division's up for grabs. Cardinals lead it right now. Seahawks are what? Two or three and six? I want to say. Are they three and six? Um, I want to say they're three and six, but I might be wrong. They, have a, they might have a bye this week. Anyways, uh, that division's up for grabs, but I don't see the... Uh, I don't really see the the Jets making it to the playoffs because you have Houston who's 6-3 and three. they're going to come out the south I think that's the only team that comes out the south you have the Bengals or excuse me not the Bengals the Ravens who are now at 8-2 is that right 8-2 Pittsburgh is 6-2 and two. I think they lose this game so I think they'll be 6-3 and three. LA probably beats Tennessee. They're six and three, and the Chiefs are eight and zero. Oh. Um, and I think they beat Denver. And even if they don't beat Denver, they're eight and one. Denver's six and four. And you got the Jets, who even if they beat the Cardinals, they're four and six. So I really don't think they. I think it was too little, too late. Obviously, this goes past this year, but. I'm just talking about this season, so as far as this season goes, I think the Marshawn Lattimore trade will be the most impactful because I don't think that that the Jets make the playoffs. Um, now, 
the Chiefs one could also be, but as I mentioned, uh, the D Hop one that is, as I mentioned, he's a little banged up. Uh, but if he if he does stay healthy, it gives opposing team something to really pay attention to and with Isaiah Pacheco coming back the offense is probably going to look a lot better but Kareem Hunt has been playing well so if you have that tandem uh, it's, it's not going to be a good look for defenses especially when the KC defense has been so great this year now my second candidate is this Amari Cooper trade because I think in the playoffs it's going to be huge for the Bills to have someone that they can really throw the ball to um, and that is a fantastic route runner. We know that Amari Cooper can cook up DBs, and he has done it in the past in his former teams at the Raiders and the Cowboys. So I think this trade second, but most importantly, I think the uh, the Lattimore trade because that commander's defense is rough, and if they could just stop, you know, if they could just let up seven less points a game, They'd, they'd be, they probably have beaten the Ravens. I'm, I'm not going to say that, but they could have. They could have. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about the trades or what you guys thought about the trade deadline. Did your team make a big move? Um, there's a lot of the same teams making moves. Chiefs made two trades. Browns made two trades. Chiefs made two trades. Uh, the Jets made two trades. Who else made multiple deals? Uh, the Jags made multiple deals. Steelers made multiple deals. Packers. The Texans made multiple deals. Vikings made multiple multiple deals. Excuse me. The Seahawks as well, I think. So a lot of uh, and the Ravens too. So a lot of the same teams making deals. But yeah, let me know if you guys uh, thought that your team should have made a deal. If they didn't or if they did make a deal, let me know what you thought about that that or those deals as always if you guys enjoyed watching the video please like comment and subscribe it's very much appreciated if you do it helps me out a lot thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace